promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and a prince of peace. He promised us that he Well, hello once again, and thank you for joining us here at Dunamis Evangelistic Outreach. My name is Elder Jesse Darrow, and if you wondered why I am grinning, so we are excited about our gathering. The Lord is stretching me, and when he stretches me, I stretch the people. What we've been talking about for probably the last couple of months have been the eagle. And you remember the Lord said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, that they will mount up with wings of eagles, they will run and not be weary, and they will walk and they will not faint. Well, waiting is not always the most comfortable thing for us as people of God. You know, we tend to, between the time the challenge comes and there's a manifestation of the blessings of God, we tend to get weary. But, he, but the, the, uh, David is saying, not David, uh, Isaiah is saying in the 40th chapter that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And so we'll learn how to soar like the eagle. And I thought a very, very interesting study was to compare the eagle and the chicken. Now, we know we're not chickens, amen, but a lot of times we are eagles who have been shaped by chickens. So I thought that to help to understand how beautiful and powerful the, chick, uh, the, the eagle is, as opposed to the chicken, I, you know, we'll make some comparisons between the eagle and the chicken today. If you remember, the uh, a chicken is a domesticated bird. In other words, uh, a chicken is tamed. You know, they, they are not a predatory animal like the eagle. An eagle is a predatory animal. In other words, the eagle will go get what it wants. But the chicken, on the other hand, is tame, and it will have someone bring to them what it is, whatever it is that they want that chicken to have. Well, why is that so important? That's important is because we have needs in the body of Christ. Well, I'm not one to sit back and wait for someone to bring me, glory be to God, what I need, because I realize that I am an eagle. And so I help the Holy Ghost to help me uh, or allow the Holy Ghost to help me define what that need is. Because all of us have needs, but we can't sit back passively and wait for someone to bring it to us. Why? Because we're not chickens. Right. We are eagles. Eagles are predatory animals, and they go after what they want. Now, in the, in the barnyard, whoever owns the chicken bring food to them, they, you know, prepare things. That's not the eagle's mentality. The eagle builds its own nest. Ah. The eagle goes after its own food. The eagle does not sit back and wait for someone to do for it what it can do for themselves. So David said something that was so profound that's been resonating in my spirit for the last few days. He said, I looked at the heavens in the eighth chapter, in the eighth Psalms, and he said, and I see the works of your fingers. He said, but who is man? that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you would visit him. Then David gets really, really deep. He said, you've crowned him with glory and honor and made him a little lower than the angels. Now, you compare the eagle with what David saw, and then you look at the chicken and you say, that's not me. Why? Because you've been crowned with glory and honor and made a little lower than the angels. And when I think about the angels in, in, in the body of Christ, it's like I, 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 I 
am just so mindful of the power that these angels had and how they would come and how they would move. An uh, angel is a messenger of God. Just for clarity, these little cute babies with wings, that's not the angels. Not, not the angels in the Bible. This right here is mystical. This is man-made. Man conjured this up. The angels were big. They were powerful. And they were sent from God. Well, so are we. They were sent from God to do his bidding. So are we. So we, if we have a ego's mentality, then we'll know that we have purpose. Amen. And then we know that we're crowned with glory and honor. So whatever the Lord has before us, we're able to perform it. Now that's important because the challenge that's before us, the challenge will always say, I can't. But an ego with the mentality of the ego will say, I can't. An eagle that's been shaped and molded by a chicken will say, I cannot. So one of the greatest things to remember about the eagle is it's a predatory animal. You take, for an example, I teach you, but you can't let that be the end of the teaching. You're an eagle. You go after more. If I give you something, uh, uh, glory be to God, to study, if I give you a teaching, you just don't wait until the next Sunday to come here and then wait for me to give you more. Right. And why? Somebody tell me why. Why did I say that? Yes. Because we are an eagle. <laughs> You're an eagle. You are a predator. You go after, you don't go after people, but you go after that word. You go after truth. Yeah. Our God is not a surface God, so we cannot maintain surface thinking. You're not a surface thinker. You have to go after what it is that God has put on your heart to do, whatever is stirring in you. Whatever it is that you know is part of your purpose, whatever is part of your destiny. That's an ego mentality. Amen? Amen. Something else about the, the chicken. A chicken runs from perceived danger. Yeah, you can be like this right here. The chicken gets all frantic. And, and something that uh, I, I really, really caught my eye was in a storm, they tend to run in circles. I did not know that because I didn't come up in, in, in the country. You know, so I don't know a lot about country living. But so when I read that, I, I, I was just very, very uh, astounded when I'm looking at the difference between a chicken's nature and the nature of an eagle. But on the same token, an uh, eagle uses beaks and talons to subdue their enemy, even if the enemy weighs more than the eagle. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> The first thing came to my mind when I saw that, of course, was David and Goliath. Now think about Israel's army was afraid. Goliath is standing up somewhere like nine feet tall. I forgot how much his coat of mail weighed. But he's standing there and he is really deriding and demeaning the army of God. And the army of God was afraid. They had to have been shaped by David's, I mean, not David, Saul's reasoning. They had to have been. Because your leader is going to make a difference concerning your boldness or your cowardness or anything in between. So with, that, with us all being afraid, naturally, the people are going to be afraid. But if, if Saul had said, we can do this, we are eagles, we can go in and we can stand up against the army of God because the Lord has our back, they became afraid. So here this shepherd boy, think about this. David, from according to commentary, is somewhere between 15 and 18 years old. One of the reasons I love working with young people around that age, give me, give me 12 to about 18 years old, and I will make giants out of them. I'm telling you the God's honest truth, because I challenge them, and I go deep into where they are, I meet them where they are, and extract out of them who they really are. I work with teenagers for about 13 years, and right now when I see them, I could be several hours over, say, at Myers, and they come over, and they will remember the skits that we used to do. Robin was talking about it the other day. We used to do a lot of um, tests. Uh, I, I, I trained, I drilled, but I kept before these young people who they really are. And I'm really excited when the Lord blesses us with the building because one of the groups that I want to work with is our children. I love working with children, and I love working with women. You guys, I, you know I love you. I really do. But uh, I, feel, I feel so anointed 
to work with, the, with teenagers. And you know one of the reasons why? Because when I was 17 years old, I lost my sense of being an eagle. I became a chicken and made a lot of poor choices for myself. And that's one of the reasons why I love working with teenagers. Because think about it. I look back now and everything just about that I wanted at that time that <laughs> mattered not at all to me right now. Nothing. Everything that seemed to matter to me at 17 has absolutely no desire at all in my heart now. But that's when I made my mistakes. And so that's one of the reasons why I enjoy working with teenagers. So, they talking about David again. So David stands up against Goliath. And listen to what David said. David said, you uncircumcised Philistine. Now why was that important? You uncircumcised Philistine. Think about it. Why was being an uncircumcised Philistine coming up against the army of God such an offense to David? Uncircumcised Philistine. Okay. Uncircumcised. No covenant. Now remember, Old Testament, the men were circumcised. The foreskin of the man was circumcised. Okay, that was an indication of covenant. Philistine is a Bible type for unrighteousness. So he's saying, wait a minute. You unsaved. You don't have my God on your side. You coming up against me talking trash. Oh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, no. I'm getting ready to, break, uh, to bring you down. And he didn't say in the name of Jesus. I'm saying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're coming down. So then we know, we've heard the story over and over and over again, but you have to understand what fueled David. He was insulted that Israel considered themselves to be chickens or eagles with a chicken mentality, and you can't hardly tell the difference except how they look. And you're coming up against the army of God and you're talking big time trash? Okay, Goliath, I don't care that you're nine feet tall. I don't care that you have on this coat of mail that weighs, and, I, and it's been so long since I studied it, but it weighed quite a bit. So then he has this heavy spear, and so David takes him down. So when an eagle has a predatory animal, it doesn't matter the weight of the opponent. This don't mean anything to you until you realize how weighty your situations can be at times. But then you wait on the Lord so that he can renew your strength. You see the parallel? I'm saying is, it doesn't matter how big the problem is. The focus for the church is how big our God is and what he can use us to do to bring down the enemy of our soul. Amen. Make sense? Okay. Something else. A chicken walks with his <coughs> eyes to the ground. Did you know that a lot of people who are out, crooks, criminals who are out looking for someone to attack, now you're going to laugh when I get ready, when I tell you the other side of this. They look for people who seem powerless and they walk with their heads down. Did you know that? I purposefully, when I'm out, when I'm out, I purposefully walk like this. <laughs> I told you to laugh. I do. You know, because I'm saying, you know what? You might catch me. You might catch me off guard. You know, but uh, I, I don't want you to know that I, I, I feel very, very confident. And for the most part, I do have a David mentality. I really do. Now you might think there's a little you know, might put walking on the edge of insanity, but I do. I don't frighten easy. Now somebody say boo, you know, something like that. I'm expecting naturally. I'm going to. But I don't frighten easy because I realize. You take your young people for an example in school. Somebody's going to find some reason to make fun of you. I bought this book, and it's about bullying. And the reason I want to read it is just to get the information so that I can share it. But from my understanding, bullying is really, really bad now in schools. But if you have an eagle's mentality, 
you won't be easily frightened. And I even understand that uh, when you're in school, your peers mean a lot to you. But do they mean more to you than you mean to yourself? Is that a fair question? Do getting along with your peers <clears throat> mean more to you than getting along with yourself? Because they'll make you feel, we used to call it knee high to a grasshopper, as opposed to having an eagle's mentality and knowing that you're able to soar knowing that you have the very spirit of God in you if you're born again, and if you're not, he's available. Do this make sense? So this peer pressure and this bullying is really shaping our young people into conforming to group think. And group think has a set of rules, and anyone that think outside of those rules, they are ostracized and mistreated. So be a careful of group think. Wherever you go, that could be the church, that could be any place that people want to get you into such a mold that you get into group thing. But that's not the life of an Amen. Any questions? So eagles, I mean chickens walk with their eyes to the ground. Eagles have telescopic vision. Eagles can see a mile or two away. Well guess what? So can we. God have given us discernment and the spirit of prophecy. There's some things. We should not fall for the okie dokes that we are falling for in, in the church because of the two things that God has given us that is comparable to telescopic vision, discernment. In other words, I'm able to distinguish good from evil. I'm able to distinguish a good spirit that's in someone from one that is unclean, troubled, or whatever. God has given us the spirit of discernment. So we don't walk with our eyes to the ground, but we walk in the authority of the Spirit. Not arrogant. Not being arrogant. I'm not talking about being arrogant. But that we walk in the authority of the Spirit. We don't walk with our head down. On your worst day, you don't walk with your head hung down. It is a sign of defeat. It is a sign of a chicken's mentality as if you have allowed this life to pull you down. But you walk with your head up. And one of the reasons is because you know who your God is. And that he will give you the ability. He will give you the strength that you need to get through the day. Not even understanding what all is going on. Not even understanding why the challenges is, are, is as great as it is. So my, my focus is coming up out of the chicken coop and allowing yourself to soar. Getting away from this chicken coop mentality restricted by something that man invented for you. Amen. 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 Something else. Uh, did you know that the symbol of a chicken is fear? Mm. Yeah. The, you're a chicken. Well, what does that mean? All right. The symbol of a chicken is fear. If someone calls you a chicken, you can, you can say with confidence and boldness, wrong bird. I'm an eagle. And then they're going to look at you like, you know, that you're not offended, but you say with confidence, no, I'm an eagle. So a chicken has a symbol of fear, but the eagle is symbolic of incredible strength, power, and patience. Incredible strength. Do you know that our eagles' talons are so strong that when they go after their prey, they can pick up a their prey that is heavier than they are? I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. Yes, absolutely phenomenal. Their talons are so strong. Incredible strength. So it's not a symbol of fear, but it's a, a, a symbol of incredible strength and power. So you're eagle. The another one is <clears throat> the chicken lives in a coop. The eagle lives on it in high places, climbs high without working hard. <laughs> climbs high without working hard. All right, now you're not going to be able to appreciate this one until it's broken down. 
Think about how you've sweated and how hard you've worked to achieve and how you have sweated and worked hard to, to gain. How you have sweated and worked hard to do something that is important to you. That's not the attitude of an eagle. An eagle just soars and things just comes easy to them because that's part of their nature. Now, so far, tell me what you've understood that I have said. Don't let the cameras throw you. Tell me what you've understood so far that I've said. Yes? That things come natural to an eagle and, you know, and a chicken, and some gives to a chicken. And you said, and what? Oh, and that a chicken, things have been brought to a chicken. Absolutely. <clears throat> For an example, I'm glad that that stuck. You figure as a young man, and I don't mean for you to answer this, but do your parents still have to tell you to clean up your room? Do they still have to tell you to brush your teeth, wash your face? At your age, do your parents still have to tell you to get your clothes ready for school? See, because it's like we can be lazy in our reasoning and in our thinking, and, or you can learn to mount up and you can learn to soar. Do your parents have to tell you to do your homework? Do your parents have to constantly remind you what your curfew is? I mean, at some point, you take on the maturity of an eagle. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, you're walking around saying, I'm an eagle, I'm an eagle, I'm an eagle, but yet I'm having someone bring everything to me. Uh, do someone have to tell you to take out the garbage or wash dishes? Do someone have to tell you to scrub the floor, even though you see that these things have need? Do someone have to tell you to clean up the bathroom? I mean, you're using it. Come on now, but someone's, to, and I'm not asking you individually. I'm saying, if we are who we say we are, then we need to take on the nature of who we say we are. Do this make sense? So I'm glad that particular one stuck with you because it's so important that if we are eagles, there's some things that should not be brought to us. We are predatory and we go after whatever it is that we feel that we need. Amen. Uh, basically, what you're teaching is uh, you, can, you can equate it, you know, when we're taking this morning, but you can equate it to uh, the children of uh, uh, the uh, children of Israel in Egypt. In Egypt, they, was in, they were chicken. They was kept in, kept into the coop, in the coop. And then they was only let out to go to work. Okay? But then our God, being the high eagle, came to saw these, saw these uh, eagles being treated as chicken, deliver them. And it showed them the power of an eagle. It, in his heart, he wanted them to, to become an eagle like himself. But every time they went out, in fear set in, they wanted to go back to the, to the chicken coops and be in control. You know, where God God was trying to bring them out to the, to the mountain. Us need to be under someone's authority. All of us need to be under someone's authority. Amen. So whether you're under parental authority or whether you are under uh, Adonai. That is the Lord God who tells us what to do. Whether we're under his authority, all, everyone needs to be under authority. But why? Why is authority so important? Did you know? Why? Think about it. Why is authority so important? We tell our children to obey us. Why is authority so important? Well, see, a lot of that has a lot to do with you. You don't want to see our children make the same mistakes you made. And um, when, you, when you obey, it's going to pay off. Oh, absolutely. Why is authority overall for you, for me, for anyone, not, not just children, but why is authority? Why is authority so important? To have, to have control. It, to have why? control. To have control, control you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, rules. Yes. Rules. Rules. Control. Rules. Yes. So basically, you know, like, like, it's almost like, you know, freedom without boundary is chaos. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. Have some type of Absolutely. It's a form of protection. Form of protection. Yeah. It is. Think about it. Authority is a form of protection. There have to be boundaries. There have right. to be rules. What, what, and you said control. control. They have to be control. You know, temperate. We have to be in control. Amen. Okay. Now, let's go to the
the molting season. Everybody have that, that hand out. Was there any questions before I go on? I don't know if Paul gave me my cue, but I'm going to act like he did, he, he did not. Okay. Um, the molting season. This is really important because I feel like I'm entering a season of molting, you know, and it is not a comfortable thing. It really is not. The molting season is a season of waiting, a test of endurance, and the blessing of renewal. Three things. Molting season is a season of waiting, a test of endurance, but there's the blessing of renewal. In an eagle's life during their season of molting, feathers become tattered and begin to fall out in patches. Their beaks are calcified, their talons are brittle, and their sight is dim. With the temporary loss of their predatory abilities, the eagle flies to a high mountain for seclusion and wait for the renewing of their strength so that they can once again mount up. In other words, during the molting season, during the molting season for the Christian, it's like you know God is there, but you don't feel His presence like He once did. You read the word, but the joy that was once there is not there. You enjoy, say, going down to the missions or going wherever and ministering to people, but that 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 there's a there's a weight. It seems like there's a weight there. That joy is no longer there. And it does not just happen for a couple of days. The molting season can last up to a year. But we need to know and be able to recognize and understand when we have gone into that season. Because chickens don't survive. They would not survive a molting season. Eagles survive a molting season. During the molting season, the eagle has to rely upon other eagles to drop food to them because they're, of their inability to care for themselves. In other words, since eagles are predatory animals, once their feathers are tattered and their um, um, beaks are calcified, their talons are brittle, they can no longer fly, they can no longer soar. So one of the important reasons for being around people that you know to have your back is because you're going to have hard times. Amen? Amen. Yes. But if you're around a chicken, they're going to look at you and do like the Levite and the priest and see that you are beaten down and all this other stuff and say, oh, well, they go over the other side and go on about their, uh, what they usually do. But an eagle in your life will look out for you. Amen? Amen. And listen, since uh, we're coming to the end of the broadcast right now, I do ask you to join us on uh, Comcast Channel 17 every Friday evening at 5.30. God bless you richly, and I really hope that you will remember that you are a carrier of God's presence, and it is up to you and it is up to me to restore the image of Christ on this earth. God bless you richly. He promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and a Prince of Peace. He promised us that He would be a counselor.